opening statement, Sam Venmo. Like I've been saying during this whole campaign, I have many more years of experience in the Senate serving as a state senator for Arizona than Mo has in his entire life. And I just, I don't understand why you would choose inexperience over experience. <laughs> oh, see? Um, I'm a, I'm a, I have a lot of experiences. Um, I, I, I'm very social. I understand, I'm a people person. I understand. I I I know I know how to communicate with people well, so I understand them. And <laughs> Good job. So Good job, Paul. Good job. 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 <laughs> um, what I would do with ISIS is basically I would stri stricken more the border patrols because the borders, like I feel, are really weak because people are still coming in here with weapons and it's not right. Okay. Yeah. Right now, I think in Syria and what is now becoming Libya, that our airstrikes are doing a sufficient amount of damage to ISIS and we are winning this war. Uh, I do agree with my fellow Democratic candidate here that we need to strengthen our borders against ISIS attacks. Though one has not occurred, it doesn't mean that we should not be prepared for one to happen. Okay. Next question. Go ahead and stand up, Mike. For both of you, what are your feelings on gun control? I'll, go, I'll take this one first. I believe that the Brady Law that was passed in the 90s needs to be strengthened. I do not believe that anyone has any use for semi-automatic rifles in civilian life. Hunting, however, is an exception. I do understand that people hunt for sport, and I believe that they should be able to acquire high caliber rifles, but you should have to go through a proper background check to get those rifles. I believe that um, that you should only have like some kind of weapon that's not like overdoing it, like like a rifle or something. All you need is a, a handgun, like just to protect yourself, not to exaggerate. Because, like, what Josh said, you you don't want to make an overkill. All you need is something to protect yourself. You can use a knife to protect yourself. So I just feel like it's it's kind of like it depends when you want to use weapons because you can basically use anything for a weapon. Okay, the Washington DC ban, they voted and they banned handguns in their city to get rid of them. The city voted it and everybody said yes. The Supreme Court said no, you have an individual right to own and keep and bear arms. Do you agree that the city should have been able to ban handguns in their city? Just a yes or no. Yes, Sam. Yes, I do. No? Yeah, I agree as well. Okay, next question. Um, what do you, are both you guys' ideas on immigration? What do you want to do about it? Immigration? Yeah. I, I honestly don't really care because I, I just feel that people just come here to just seek the opportunities that they have in the, the United States to look for better jobs and etc. So, yeah, basically I just feel like if you're coming here for a good purpose, it doesn't really matter where you come from. The question is, what are you going to do with the 11 million people that are already here? Are you going to let them stay here? Are you going to ship them home? Are you going to give them a pathway to citizenship? Well, like I said, like if they're here for for reason for good reasons, then why why should they leave? They're only here to seek yeah. opportunity. I think that there are just millions of people here that are what some people would say illegal or what I would prefer to say undocumented immigrants that they fill jobs that normal people don't do like they work in the fields and they do all these all this low level work and they aren't recognized for it I think that they need to be able to get citizenship here next question uh, Matt. do you think that they need to be paying taxes in order to live here like 
Yeah, I do. I do believe that they should <coughs> be treated as citizens in the same respects that you are. But I do also think that they should receive tax breaks, and I believe in a progressive tax that would not hurt people who are on a lower income level. I I, I completely agree as well. I feel that. As a citizen, if you want to be considered a citizen, you have to participate in the United States and help out as well. For uh, drugs like prescription pills and marijuana or crack cocaine and heroin, what will you do about that? Wait, what do you mean? Like, will you legalize it, or will you strengthen how hard it is for doctors to give away drugs, or what's your stance on prescription pills, or hard drugs, or just marijuana? You want to it's a both of you. Um, I believe that we need to decriminalize marijuana. It's just a fact now that society is coming to terms with the marijuana epidemic, well, it's, I almost just said epidemic. The, uh, the marijuana, the spreading increase, the increasing amount of marijuana use in the US. And it should be decriminalized. But at the same, well, no, not at the same time, because I also believe that other drug laws should be reduced because it's, it's a hard one. Okay, oh. I, I feel like it, it should be legalized. Like, if you want to harm your health, harm your health. It's your choice. Next question. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Um, so, Sam, I know you're a progressive tax. Um, what is your stance, and what do you think about raising or lowering the minimum wage? Me or no? Uh, first was for no, second was for both. Wait, can you repeat the question? Are you progressive or flat tax? Uh -huh, flat tax. And then what do you think about minimum wage? Should you raise it or? The, wa the wages? Minimum wage. Minimum wage. I think it should be raised by a little bit, not too much. It's pretty decent right now. Give me a dollar. Uh, Two dollars. I believe that minimum wage is not enough right now for normal people to get by. If you're working a average job and you're just an average person, you are struggling right now in America. And we need to raise this minimum wage up to at least fourteen dollars for people to get by. Next question, what Josh? Okay, this is for Sam. Yeah. Given your uh, many instances of social abuse, what are your what are your social what what policies would you put into place that you would use the socialist um, techniques? Or yeah, All right, I think I get what you're saying. So. I am all for healthcare reform. I think that this healthcare system that we have right now is it's good. We've got it almost to the point where it's it's not perfect, but it's getting there. It's getting closer. And I believe that we can keep that in check. And I'm trying to think of another thing that would be education. Oh, yes, education. Thank you. Um Definitely, I believe that we should not have private schools anymore. I think that we should get rid of the private schools and give money back to public education because we need an educated workforce or else we aren't going to be able to compete with countries like Germany or China even. Okay. Next question. All right. So what uh, do you plan on doing with the health, the health care system? I'm not really sure about, I don't know that much about healthcare. You know, I honestly, I think it is all right the way that it is right now. It will eventually need to be improved, but there are other issues that need to come first. Um, what are you guys going to do to like, help preserve the environment? Um, I am definitely going to start putting sanctions on countries that are not using resources efficiently. Countries like Saudi Arabia, countries in the Middle East that are, they're still developing, but they aren't doing it efficiently. 
um, China, I'm going to increase talks with China to be able to sort out something, a compromise for both us and China to stop polluting this earth and to slow the rapid expansion of global warming. Because, oh, sorry, oh. you go. I feel, I feel that we should increase the research for environmentalism. Like, I don't think not lots of people put a lot of focus on, envir on the environment. And I think that we should do more research and put more on our taxes to help the research for our environment. Next question. Everybody should. This is participation. This is for parade. A lot of people think the drinking age should be 18 because that's when you're allowed to join the uh, army or the marines to fight for your country. Do you agree that the drinking age should be 18 or should stay at 21? I, I honestly believe that, that that should be it because I feel like if you're old enough to go to the army, I feel like you're old enough to drink. I believe that that is a very valid point. And I think that the age should be 18 as long as laws accommodate for that. So we need to make stronger drinking and driving laws to prevent people from causing mass chaos when they're 18 and being able to drink. Go ahead. How do you make stronger laws against drinking and driving other than making it illegal? Like, how, like how would you? Yeah. Um, you would make it more of, I think it would be more federal crimes for, like say you, and you'd also not even just make more punishments, but you would also give benefits to people. Like in Switzerland, they do this thing where if you're a designated driver, you get discounts in like bars and stuff. If you're not drinking, they'll give you a discount. I think that we should be able to do that here. But at the same time, if they are caught drinking, it's a much higher punishment. It's a bigger fine or even jail time. A lot of seniors in high school are 18. So like for events like school dances and things like that, how would you enforce? I mean, half your students will be able to drink at your mm -hmm. events. Well, I mean, they already do now, but <coughs> I, as long as <laughs> I don't think it would be that much of a change. I think it might actually cause more moderation to be put in place because it will be so, it won't be as big of a deal to drink and then go to a school event. You might just drink a little and then go to a school event, or you might even drink at the school event if it's just for 18 year olds, but you have to do so responsibly. Uh, with organizations such as MAD, how do you think that you, the Mothers Against Drunk Driving, which is why the drinking age didn't get moved down uh, mm -hmm. a while ago, how would you be able, or how do you think that you could convince them to allow the drinking age to go down? Because they're a main factor in why it hasn't moved down. Well, I think it would have to start with the improving the laws against drinking. I don't currently have any stronger laws off the top of my head, but I am almost certain that stronger laws will convince them. Um, my cousins live in Germany, so I know that this, but in Germany, when you're 16, you're allowed to drink beer and wine or low alcohol content beverages. Yeah. But once you hit 21, you're allowed to drink hard alcohol, high alcohol beverages. Do you think that this should be enforced in America, or do you think that it should be, you're allowed to have hard alcohol and low alcohol in both cases? Is this for both of us? Or is yeah. this for you? Uh, do you want to go first? I'm just trying to do that. Oh, I, I feel like, it should be like, I don't, it shouldn't really matter because I just feel like it's your responsibility to drink the, the right proportion. I think that alcohol content should be monitored. I think that that is a great idea that 18 you should be able or to only drink lower alcohol content. And then at 21, you receive the full shebang. You can drink whatever alcohol content you want. Okay, closing statements, Mo first, then say. Um, I'd like to say that I, I really want to 
you guys could vote for me as president, even though I'm not a really good speaker. I'm gonna try my best to make this class better than ever.